day one started with a gradual early morning climb towards the Strawberry Mountains. At about mile 23, the climbing begins in earnest with 2,000 foot climb over 10 miles, including grades reaching 8%. Finally, the summit at nearly 6,000 feet, followed by a long high-speed descent, including cattle guards. Unfortunately, there was one nasty little climb before we dropped into Logan Valley. As we made the five-mile crossing of Logan Valley, the temperatures headed towards 90 degrees. Right after Logan Valley, there's about 10 miles of nasty climbs and descents before starting our 23-mile slide and glide back to the finish at John Day. The heat and the headwinds took a little bit of the fun out of this stretch, but the reward at the finish? A pint of delicious Alpenrose chocolate milk. Yum! Day two for Cycle Oregon and an early start to avoid the heat for this 71 mile ride to Burns. The first 10 miles was a 900 foot false flat ascent with some short steep bumps mixed in. At about mile 10 we begin a five mile 2200 foot climb up Bear Gulch over the Aldrich Mountains. The painful pull of gravity was more than offset by the beautiful blue sky morning. After a quick stop at the welcome rest stop at the top of the hill, we begin the three mile fast, fun descent into Bear Valley. Shortly after Bear Valley, we enter Sylvie's Valley and a delicious lunch at the Sylvie Valley Ranch. After lunch, we continue our wind-aided flight through Sylvie's Valley for another 15 miles. At about mile 43, we begin a 10-mile, 900-foot climb over Divine Ridge. While the climb wasn't bad, the heat was definitely on. Relief was on its way in the form of a 10-mile, 1,200-foot fast sled ride into Harney Basin. And after 10 flat hot miles through Harney Basin, it's time to relax. After getting some help decamping from a local porter, we begin our 63 mile trek from Burns to Diamond. Right, this ride would be like a tortilla, hot, flat, and with a few bumps. One of those bumps would be the climb over Wright's Point. This is a one mile, 220 foot climb with about 5% grade. The reward, a great view from the top and a fun descent on the backside. At about mile 26, we pass between Malheur and Harney Lakes on our way to lunch at the Malheur Lake National Wildlife Refuge. Shortly after lunch, we begin the second climb of the day, a one and a half mile, 315 foot climb at about 6% grades. Once again, there's a great view from the top and a nice descent into Blitzen Valley. we rode through Blitzen Valley, the temperatures climbed to the mid-90s as we rode against a tough little headwind. We skirted the north side of Jackass Butte and Jackass Mountain before turning left on Diamond Lane. Just eight miles to go and you can see the campgrounds in the distance. The home stretch 
Then the finish, where they serve delicious popsicles at the end of the ride. We all slept in a little bit on day four for what was supposed to be an 80 mile ride morphed into a 42 mile ride with a 12 mile additional option. Once on to State Highway 205, it was smooth sailing with the wind at our back as we cruised along the eastern slope of Jackass Mountain. To our left was Blitzen Valley and the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. After 20 miles, it was turnaround time. The reason? Cattle drive. When not chasing. In the battle between several thousand head of cattle and several thousand head of cyclists, the cattle win. So instead of taking the steep climb up the ridge up to Roaring Springs Ranch, we popped a U-turn and rode into the teeth of a nice headwind. Mesas are concrete, all the bulls are on Wall Street, all the cowgirls are in Dallas, and they've all bleached their hair. Once back onto Diamond Lane, it was just a few short miles back to camp, seen there in the distance. But instead of calling it a day, I took the optional ride up the lush green Diamond Valley to the Diamond Valley Hotel. This is a charming little hotel that served fantastic barbecue, wonderful root beer floats, and the best homemade pie I think I've ever seen. Stuffed to the gills with yummy food, it was a short but very hot ride back to the campsite and a nice long shower to wash off the dust and the barbecue sauce. Day 5 of Cycle Oregon was a flat, short 40 mile ride from Diamond to Crane. Nearly all of the climbing was packed into the first 15 miles of the ride as we wended our way through the Diamond Craters. At the high point, there was a great view looking north into the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. And after 10 miles, there was a short stop at the Pete French Brown Barn State Park. This is definitely a sight worth seeing. Back on the road, we continued down Lava Bed Road to Highway 78 where we were treated to a great tailwind that pushed us along at high speeds towards lunch at Crystal Crane Hot Springs. Now the smart riders brought bathing suits and took full advantage of the hot springs at Crystal Crane. Not being one of the smart riders, I elected to take the additional 45 mile loop. The 45 mile loop was about as flat and desolate as a ride could be. Luckily, there was enough of a cloud cover to keep us from feeling like a french fry under a heat lamp. But the only tough part of the ride was the 11 mile stretch into the headwinds on Highway 20, where we faced bad roads, headwinds, and trucks passing other trucks in our lane. Turning south from Highway 20, we had a brief encounter with the stinking water mountains and then headed back to Crane. At Crane, which boasts of the only public boarding high school in the U.S., we were greeted with delicious ice mochas courtesy of Nosa Familia. Between the heat, headwinds, and 4,000 feet of climbing, the 74-mile penultimate day of Cycle Oregon promised to be a long day in the saddle. After a flat 17-mile ride out of Harney Basin, we begin the first climb of the day a three and a half mile, 580 foot climb through the stinking water mountains. At the top, however, we were rewarded with an eight and a half mile fast, fun descent along Pine Creek, an 1100 foot death drop thrill ride through beautiful scenery and sketchy roads. After lunch at Pine Creek School and a short trip along Wolf Creek, we kicked off a desperate seven mile, 1600 foot climb through the Aldrich Mountains with grades up to 9%. The pain and suffering inflicted by the Aldrich Mountains 
was rewarded with a four-mile thrilling slide and glide into Sylvie Valley. Stock market may go through the sky, but don't count on that. Or you may get to heaven before you die. Although we had escaped the clutches of the Grabtons, we still faced an 11-mile false flat climb into the teeth of a stiff headwind. The final rest stop at Sylvie's Valley Ranch was a welcome respite from the headwind. Finally, after skating the few bumps between Sylvie Valley and Bear Valley, we arrived in Seneca to be greeted with Alpen Rose Chocolate Milk. Day 7, the final day of Cycle Oregon, a 56 mile ride from Seneca back to John Day. We started the day with a seven mile flat ride across Bear Valley to the foot of the Aldrich Mountain. After turning left on Izzy Road, we had about six miles of chip seal that was done with what appeared to be railroad gravel. We did have a great view though as we skirted the top of Bear Valley. Just after mile 12, we turned right onto beautiful National Forest Road 21 for a very gradual three and a half mile, 270 foot ascent. The easy climb was followed by a stunningly beautiful seven and a half mile descent along Murderer's Creek. Finally, at mile 24, we begin the only real climb of the day and the final climb of Cycle Oregon. This was a three and a half mile, 900 foot climb with a pretty constant grade of seven to nine percent. Paid my dues in factories. I worked until I bled. The suffering made me stronger, so I pushed to get ahead. At the top, we were greeted by Smokey the Bear. And then we began the highlight of the route. A rather insane 10 mile, 3,000 foot descent with grades from minus 7 to up to minus 14%. Having to cross nine cattle guards at speed only added to the thrills. At about mile 38, we turn right for the last 18 miles of the ride along the beautiful John Day River. And while I knew I wouldn't miss getting up at 5.30 a.m. every morning, I was already starting to miss riding in the beautiful southeastern part of the state. Thanks to the citizens of Harney and Grand Counties for hosting us, and thanks to the organizers, sponsors, workers, and volunteers for putting on such a great ride. And a special thanks to Rick and Carol for being the best ride partners one could ask for.